What's up you guys? This is Sheila and you are very welcome to a brand new episode of La Therapy. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day so far. I hope your day is going well. I thought I would start out this episode by telling you one fun fact about me, um, maybe multiple. So the first one is that I have three older sisters. Yes, I have three older sisters. Such a privilege. <laughs> the best thing in the world. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's something I'm wearing that's from my sister's closet. Yep, my jeans are from my sister's closet. Yep, yep. <laughs> the joy of having older sisters. Um, but yeah, no, I have three older sisters. They all live in different provinces, which is interesting, which means that whenever I travel for the most time within Canada, I always have a place to stay. I have a sister who lives in Saskatchewan. I have a sister who lives in Alberta. And then my other sister lives in Toronto. So kind of like split up across the globe. But yeah, no, it's fun. Um, you guys let me know, do you have any siblings? Are you an only child? Do you have big brothers, older sisters, younger brothers or younger sisters? And what is that like? Um, another fun fact, something that I really enjoy eating. I really enjoy eating pasta, any type of pasta like spaghetti, fettuccine, alfredo, macaroni, any kind of pasta. I love pasta so much. And I also love fried rice. And this is an unpopular opinion, but I think fried rice is high key greater than jollof rice. But hey, hey. <laughs> my friend is like, no, not that. But honestly, I feel like fried rice, like jollof rice is just jollof rice. You eat it everywhere, every day. But fried rice, you can add shrimp, you can add like, you know, little chunks of like beef. Like fried rice is amazing, okay? Anyways, please don't unsubscribe to this podcast. <laughs> please don't stop watching. Let us get into today's episode. I don't know if I should start by just kind of telling you guys how I came about this myself. I feel like I was in a very interesting space. You know, interesting is the word you use when you don't know what else to say. <laughs> I was in a very interesting space where I think I was just feeling like not really happy. Things are not going that great. It's not really my best self. And I was kind of wondering, like, oh, God, like, why am I here again? Like, I thought we were done with this. I thought, like, this chapter was over, you know, and I was just there. Like, on some days, it'd be okay. Some days, I'd have, like, a hard day. I would cry. Like, you know, I'd feel sad and weighted down and, you know, just sort of, like, going through, like, different emotions, if you will, right? And, you know, I just... I was just in that space and of course like i was praying reading my bible doing all the things um and i i just remember i remember that question in my heart where i was like god like i really thought like i was done with this kind of space like i thought we had moved on from this you know and that's when the scripture came to me galatians chapter 5 verse 1 says stand fast therefore in the liberty which christ has made you free do not be entangled again by a yoke of bondage that scripture came to me and i was like Whoo. it was like a <laughs> you know i was like okay and essentially you know god was telling me like the scripture was so literal i didn't need anyone to interpret it for me he was saying Sheila, stand fast therefore in the liberty by which i have already made you free we've gone we've gone through this path You've been set free. Do not be entangled again by another yoke of bondage. God was saying, it is your responsibility now that I have freed you to ensure to walk in that freedom, to ensure to stand fast and stand firm in that, in that freedom. I have done my part by setting you free. Now you have to walk in it. You have to walk in that freedom. You have to refuse to be entangled again by that yoke of bondage. You know what the signs look like. You know what it is when you are getting into this space again. You know what it is when you're allowing your mind to spiral into these thoughts again. So you have to refuse that. You have to be at alert and on guard. Right? It was essentially what God was saying to me. And I thought that was so profound. And I really wanted to share it with you. You know, obviously, I never really know who's going to click on this or what you're going through or anything like that. But I know that there are many who can use this word that, hey, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty which Christ has made you free, and do not be entangled again by another yoke of bondage. Christ has already set you free. He did it on the cross, and every single day, whenever you're confronted with a situation, the Bible says, I will go before you. I will make the crooked places straight. 
I will make streams of water in the deserted places. I will smoothen the rough edges. I will make the path before you straight. God has already gone ahead of you. And there are many things that God has set you free from. I don't know if it's depression. I don't know if it's heartache. I don't know if it's a stronghold in your mind, challenging thoughts, anxiety, depression, fear. There are many things that God has set you free from. And sometimes like me, you may look at yourself and say, God, I thought we were done with this. Why are we back here again? And God is saying to you, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty which I have set you free. And you may ask, okay, Sheila, how can I stand fast? How can I, you know, how can I walk in this freedom that Christ has set me free? The, free from. The beautiful thing about God is that every time he's freeing us from something, every time God is delivering us, he does so by his word. He does so by the power of his word. So I know that there is a word that God spoke to you. There is a word that God spoke to you in that season where you were needing his deliverance, where you were needing his help. When you cried out for his help, there is a word that he spoke to you. And you have to go back to that word because that word is your life. The Bible says that the flesh profiteth nothing, but the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and their life. Look, the word that God has spoken to you concerning that situation is your life. That is the means by which you arise. And so you cannot keep that word in the corner and just keep living your life, going about your daily life and expecting that, you know, everything will be rosy. But you have to hold on to that word. You know, the Bible says, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. Thy word have I hidden in my heart. The word that God has spoken to you, you have to hide that word in your heart. That is your, that is your, it is your life. It is your source of livelihood. Because the Bible says that the entrance of God's words, that it gives light to the simple. And so the word that he has spoken to you concerning that situation, when you cried out to him for help, and he said to you, your ways are prosperous. Even if he just said to you, all things are working together for your good. Even if he just said to you, I will make all things beautiful in my time. Even if he said to you that, you know, I will strengthen and protect you and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Even if he said to you that I am your shepherd, if he said to you that I am your shield, your glory, and the one who lifts your head, I don't know the word that God spoke to you. But whatever that word is, you've got to take a hold of it. You've got to hide it in your heart. You've got to be conscious of it. You've got to remind yourself of it and carry that word with you. Just like how when you're leaving home, you don't leave without your wallet. You don't live without your driver, driver's license. You don't live without your bus pass. Why are you going about life leaving the word that God has given to you behind? You have to take that word. You have to take that word. You have to take that word with you so that you can stand fast. And I know that God will deliver by his word. He sends forth his word first. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that God sent forth his word and it healed us from our diseases. You know, it says he sent forth his word and he healed them from their diseases. Disease there, I don't like to interpret as just ailments or sicknesses. I can even see it as dis-ease. So anything that has caused you dis-ease, discomfort, pain, hurt in the past god has there's a word that god has sent forth to you to heal you of that disease to heal you of that pain what is that word if you don't remember there is no way that you can stand fast in that liberty which christ has set you free and i know that christ has freed you even you know you know that there was once upon a time where you were no longer plagued by these thoughts where you were no longer plagued by these challenges you know in the book of ephesians chapter 117 the bible says that God purchased your freedom with his blood. God purchased your freedom with his blood. There's a song I love so much. It's a song, No Longer Slaves. There's a lyric in it that says, You rescued me so that I can stand and say, I am a child of God. Look, the reason why God died on the cross is so that you can stand free. Not just then, but so that every single day you can live in that freedom that he purchased for you with his precious blood. You're not just some weak, easy to make fall person that is supposed to be tied up in a bondage, but no, you were built to last. You were built to last. You know what scripture says concerning you? It says that you are like a tree that is planted by the rivers of waters. It says that even when the sun came, the heat came and scorched so hard on that tree, that that tree, it didn't cease to flourish. You are like the cedars of Lebanon. You were built to last. God made you so that you can last. He made you so that you can stand firm in your liberty. He made you so that there is something on the inside of you that can arise and that can shine. And so I'm encouraging you to come out of that place of being depressed, of that place of being anxious, of that place of being fearful, because Christ has set you free by his word. And if you don't remember the word that he gave to you, ask him again or ask him to give you another word, right? 
ask him to give you another word. You see, the reason why it's so crucial for you to stand in the liberty by which Christ has set you free is because this freedom is not just for you. The reason why Christ set you free is so that his glory may be revealed through your freedom. And so there is a weight, there is a cost to that freedom. And it is the glory of God. And so the reason why you must stand in that freedom, that you must ensure as far as it depends on you, after God has done his part, to be free, to want to be free, to desire to be free and to stand in that freedom is because that freedom doesn't just depend on you. There is, there is an assignment. There is an assignment that God has attached to the fact that he delivered you. There is a purpose that is attached to the deliverance of God on your life. And you must walk in that purpose. And so you cannot, you know, sometimes it's almost like we're so comfortable with oppression. And I'm sorry, I don't mean to use all these big, you know, Christian words, but we're so comfortable with, with just, you know, not not living the fullness of who we are called to be. We're so comfortable with not living a flamboyant, joyful, radiant life. It's like we're so comfortable in where we are because we think, oh, you know, this is just what happens to me. This is just me. This is just my life. This is just what happens in my family. No, no. You've been exempted by the blood. You've been exempted by the blood. Christ purchased your freedom with this precious blood. See, you're not just breakable under any, any, any circumstances. You're strong. You're mighty. God has made you mighty. God has put a strength on the inside of you, his own strength, the strength of his spirit, the same strength by which he made the world dwells on the inside of you. The Bible says that if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells on the inside of you, that that spirit will quicken your body to the glory of his name. There is a strength that lies on the inside of you. There is a, there is a life that lies on the inside of you. And so you cannot just be comfortable being sad, being depressed, being weighted down. No, you have to get up. You have to get up. You have to get up, especially if this is something that God has already delivered you from. You can't go back to that place of bondage. You can't go back to that place of entanglement. It says that you should not be entangled again by another yoke of bondage. And so the responsibility is now on you. It's on us because Christ has already freed us. It's on you to go to the word. Lord, what does your word say? What does your word say? What have you said concerning this situation? What have you said concerning this situation? Your word says that a thousand may fall at my side, 10,000 at my right hand, but it will not come near me. Your word says that the Lord is a shield about me. He is round about me. He is my glory and the one who lifts my head. Your word says that, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Your word says that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I declare that this is the morning and my joy has come. Your word says, your word says that everywhere I go, I find peace. Your word says that everywhere I go, your peace that surpasses all understanding guides me into the truth. That is what your word says. That is what your word says. Your word says that I am strengthened. Your word says that I am whole. Your word says that I am healed. Your word says that I am made well in my mind. Your word says that my mind is sound. Your word says that I have the mind of Christ. Your word says that Christ in me, the hope of glory. Your word says that if God be for me, who can be against me? Your word says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but they keep getting up again. Your word says that the righteous may fall seven times, but he will get up over and over again. Your word says that those that look to God, their faces will not be ridden with confusion, but their faces will be radiant and they will know no shame. Your word says that because I put my trust in you, I will mount up on wings as eagles. I will run and not be weary. I will walk and not faint. Your word says that because I dwell in your secret place, I will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my strength. Your word says that no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. Any tongue that rises its tongue against me in judgment is condemned. What does the word of God said about, say about you? What is that word that God has spoken to you? You will live by that word. You will stand in your freedom by that word, by confessing that word. And so I want to encourage you, please, 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 don't just... You know, live your life so nonchalantly, allowing things to happen to you, just staying in your bed, crying, being depressed. And I'm not saying that crying is bad. Trust me. If you, <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen a video of me crying somewhere, <laughs> you know, and sharing my testimony. So I'm not trying to say that, you know, crying or expressing emotions or anything is bad. But I'm just saying that that state of utter depression, that state of utter brokenness, where you cannot even see the light, you can't see yourself rising up again. That is not the portion of God for you. And I'm saying that if Christ has already set you free, the reason why he set you free is so that you can stand boldly and you can say, I'm a child of God. 
You can say no weapon formed. That you can arise from that place of depression. That you can get up and say, I will arise and shine because my light has come. That you can decide in your heart with the strength of the spirit that God puts on the inside of you. That you can rise up and stand in your freedom and refuse to be entangled again by any yoke of bondage. Refuse, refuse, dear listener, refuse, refuse to be entangled again by any yoke of bondage. Christ has already set you free. And I pray, I pray for you that by the help of the Holy Spirit, that by the might of the Holy Ghost, that you will walk in the liberty that Christ has already set you free. And that is my prayer for you today. I pray that you'll walk in that freedom permanently in Jesus mighty name. Alrighty. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this episode of Love Therapy. I really hope that you are blessed and I celebrate your new freedom. I celebrate your new walk in freedom and I will see you on the next episode of Drum Roll. <laughs> Love Therapy. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I cannot wait to see you next time. Bye now. Thank you.